many people are dealing with challenges in their marriage. What is your challenge in your relationship? Is it infidelity? Somehow you feel betrayed, you feel traumatized, and you are disappointed. You did not expect marriage to be like that. Or it could just be verbal abuse or physical abuse. And you feel as though, wow, your life is falling shambles at your feet and you don't know what to do. You are so disappointed, traumatized every day and you are suffering in silence. What is your issue in your marriage? Could it be that you are just having a loveless marriage? There's no more intimacy. There is only errant talk and you are, you are in a superficial marriage. There is no joy, no bliss, no depth of feelings, no deep communication. And you are just yearning for something better. You don't feel liked, loved or respected in the relationship. And you, you believe that there is more to marriage than this. Hi, I have good news for you. No matter what you are dealing with in your marriage, we'll be discussing your issue in our two-day retreat. I'm excited to have you, friends. By the way, did you know that there are 10 fundamental components of marriage that everybody must be knowledgeable of. As a matter of fact, any issue that you have in your marriage will be discussed in principle in one of these 10 fundamental principles of marriage. And in our retreat, of course, we will not be able to deal with, uh, with all the questions, but come with your questions, come with your concerns. We will discuss them, we will talk about them, we will, we, we will confront them, and we will seek answers to your difficult questions. Remember now, our motto is to make bad marriages good and good marriages better. Let me just show you very quickly, friends, in my program, there are 10 components of marriage that you must be aware of. And these are what we share, what we talk about in our program. The 10 of them very quickly. Number one, expectations. Many people never did a premarital preparation program before they got married. And so when they got married, they did not discuss expectations. They have expectations of their spouse. And now they are disappointed because the spouse is not living up to what they expected. These expectations are called private rules. Oh, these rules are developed over time from your, from your, your family of origin, from the media, from your friends, or just from going to church or reading good books or just attending school. So people now have different experiences. You're coming from different culture. And so when you get married, you did not know that this other person had all these expectations of you. Why? You did not discuss them before marriage. And so friends, I have a PDF, 25 questions that you must discuss with your partner before you're married or after marriage. And you'll get this PDF free of charge once you become a member uh, and join in this retreat. 25 questions to discuss with your partner. We're also gonna talk about number two, headship. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Did you know friends that regardless of who that woman is, even if she's a member of the women's movement, she is looking to her husband for leadership, to, to set the mood by which the family functions. You see, the man is the thermostat. He regulates the atmosphere in the home. He regulates the heat. The woman is the thermometer. She tells you how hot it is. She responds. And so you must understand your role as a man in the home for she is expecting headship, leadership, supportive leadership, gentle leadership, leading with humility. That's what she's expecting from you in the home, but you must know what leadership entails. Number, um, number three, we're gonna talk about in-laws. Did you know, friends, that one of the major causes, one of the principal causes of divorce is in-laws issues? By the way, I want to tell you this. If you don't know how to relate to in-laws issues, you, may, you create blunders, friends. It's amazing. You can alienate your in-laws from you for life. If you do not approach the in-laws issues, with intelligence and wisdom, but you must 
know how to deal with those in-laws issues. Exactly. Number four, we talk about predictors of divorce. Hello. There are four predictors of divorce. Did you know, friends, that it is possible to ascertain the likelihood with a 95% accuracy whether a person <laughs> may divorce later. Yes, just observe how they deal with conflicts today. And so we're talking about what the predictors of divorce. You've got to be in the retreat, friends. We're going to talk about every issue that could possibly arise in marriage. In principle, you will learn how to become a relationship expert. By the way, if you don't learn these fundamental tenets of marriage, you could fail miserably in your marriage. What do you do when you don't have knowledge? You blunder along. But what do you do when you possess knowledge? You have maximum performance. This is why, friends, the number one cause of divorce worldwide is incredible ignorance. You cannot do marriage except you are educated as to the fundamental components of marriage. If not, you are blundering along. And so, friends, number the next thing we talk about, number five, is conflict resolution. Mm -mm -mm. You must know how to resolve conflicts in your marriage. By the way, there are some who like to use the you statement. You this and you that. And you know, when you use the you statements like that, they communicate condemnation. It's as though you are attacking your partner. Watch this now. Everybody has to live with himself 24 seven. And so he will live or she will live her life defending herself. Nobody likes to feel attacked. And so friends, you must know how to resolve conflicts. Instead of the you statements, use the I statements where you express how you feel. And guess what? Nobody can deny how you feel. We deal with, we, we deal with a number of techniques on how to resolve conflicts in your marriage. Number six, we talk about communication. Wow, communication, friends. Mm -mm. Communication is to a relationship what the blood is to the body. If you hemorrhage the body of its blood, then you die. If you fail to communicate properly. Friends, mm -mm, that relationship just descend into anarchy and discord. And so you must learn proper communication techniques if you are to have a great relationship. Number seven, we talk about money. Money. Did you know that in North America, the number one cause of divorce is money? Not that people don't have enough in many cases, but they don't know how to manage what they have. We talk about how to strike a budget, how to put together a budget. Who should be the minister of finance in the home? Should you spend from a common pool or should you split the bills? Friends, we talk, every, we talk about everything you need to know about money so you can have a great marriage. Also, number eight, we talk about sexuality. Oh, that's a big subject. Friends, many think they know about sexuality, but they have no idea. Some are basically clueless. They don't even discuss it within the confines of the bedroom. Why? Because they don't have a frame of reference. And when you don't know what to talk about, you leave it alone. And people continue to suffer because of sexual issues in marriage. Some are suffer from, suffering from sexual rejection. Some don't understand women. Some don't know that the, the psychological nature and the sexual nature of a woman are closely intertwined. If she's wounded psychologically, if her feelings are hurt and they are not healed, then she cannot respond sexually. Sometimes the man says, well, oh, you don't like me anymore. Are you keeping somebody with me? No, you must just understand her. As a matter of fact, many times when there are sexual issues in the marriage, it is not the sex per se, but it is the marriage. Something is wrong in the marriage. And you need to fix that if you are to be restored, okay? if you are to get back into intimacy in the relationships. And so we talk about sexuality. So any question you have, come with your questions, come with your concerns, and we put them on the table. We confront them and we deal with them. Amen. All right. Next, we talk about number nine, his needs, her needs. We talk about the 10 components of marriage that we're going to talk about in our retreat and in our program that we have. His needs, her needs. This is big. Did you know that marriage is all about meeting needs? 
When people, when people's needs are not met in the relationship, they feel dissatisfied, they feel unsatisfied, they feel dis they are disgruntled, they're miserable because their needs are not met. They are always angry and you don't know why. And watch this now. You cannot meet your partner's needs except you know what those needs are. When they are trying, but I've done this for her and I've done that for her. Oh, I've, I did this for him. But the question is, he's still unhappy. Why? Do you really know what his needs are? You may be trying, but if you don't know what those needs are, mm -mm -mm, you're failing every time. Marriage is about meeting needs. By the way, I want to give you a definition for marriage now. Marriage is the union of two servants in love. Amen. You must know how to meet each other's needs. Did you know that men and women are wired differently? How you want your needs met, lady? That's not how he wants his needs met. You are wired differently, so you must understand womanhood and you must understand manhood. Amen. Finally, number 10, what the triumphant marriage looks like. Wow. Friends, we're going to paint a picture. We're going to show you exactly the secret to having a triumphant marriage. Oh, you must be there. So friends, right now, join the retreat, join the program, and I look forward. I'm excited to see you in the studio.